Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, and I've been using the new version of iPadOS in beta since it came out about two weeks ago at WWDC, and today I want to talk about the feature that I was most excited for, but now I'm the most confused by. And that feature is Stage Manager. I was going to do an entire video talking about all of iPadOS, but this, this sort of just needs its own video for me to talk about, so that's what we're doing today. Let's get started. In case you missed it, Stage Manager is a feature that was actually first introduced with macOS Ace Ventura, the new version of macOS that was announced at WWDC. And what it allows you to do is group programs into their own workspaces. And you can switch between them through a little toolbar along the side, or you can also hop to them just by going down to the dock. And later on in the keynote, when they went to talk about iPadOS, they introduced this feature for iPadOS as well. In terms of how it works on the Mac, when I've been using it on my Mac mini server, it's been fine because I do tend to hop between multiple programs in different sort of workflows. And so having each workflow grouped into its own little work group, I guess is the best way to put it, that's been really nice. But on the iPad, it's a little different. Now, don't get me wrong, I have wanted a window management tool on the iPad since I started using the iPad Pro all the way back with my first generation 11 inch model. And this is the closest we've gotten to it, but it's not perfect. To start out with the good things, it is nice that you can now have more things on screen with the iPad than just the three, maybe four things if you had two split screen windows plus the slide over window and picture in picture, because that layout was super cluttered and really slide over was only good for quick interactions, picture in picture was a one use function, and then the split screen was where all your productivity happened. This is actually more of a desktop setup in a way. Another nice thing is that you can actually have it hide the two different docks, the window dock on the side, as well as your actual application dock at the bottom. This is something that I've seen a lot of YouTubers sort of gloss over, but when I was messing around with it on macOS, I saw that you could still have your dock and the sidebar auto hide. And so I figured that it was a feature here and sure enough it was. So if you see YouTubers complaining that you can't hide the dock and that you're wasting a ton of screen space, you're not, you can hide those. However, this is one of the first bad things, which is that it's kind of buggy. So when you go to pull something up on the side, you have to be very precise with your mouse movement. Otherwise, it's not really gonna, not really gonna do what you want. There's also an under the hood feature I found super useful, which is just how iPadOS manages the memory now. Not to say it was bad before. In fact, iPads and just Apple devices in general have fantastic memory management. But now, because you can have multiple things open, you can take advantage of things like applications using the full memory capabilities of this device as opposed to being limited. And you can also have virtual memory swap, which is something as a user you may not experience, but what this allows for is for different programs that are not currently in use to be written off to the storage, which is extremely fast storage. And then when these programs are needed again, it just pulls it right back into the system memory and continues to use it as it was. This is a huge deal because if programs are gonna start using more and more memory, but you're also going to be swapping between programs more frequently, being able to keep them in some sort of save state without overloading the RAM is a huge benefit. And I feel like that feature was introduced for two main reasons. Number one, because the M1 chip is the required chip for this and it can handle virtual memory swap. And number two, because Stage Manager pretty much made it a requirement. And yeah, I did say that the M1 chip is the required chip to run Stage Manager. So now we're gonna get into some of the bad things. And just to be clear, I am just judging this by the way it is right now. If there are improvements to some of my complaints, I will address it in a later video, though there are a few things I don't really see changing. So as of right now, I am judging this as it is in beta one. If things change, I'll address it. But the first thing I'm gonna mention is something I don't see changing. And that first thing is the fact that you need to have an M1 iPad to use Stage Manager. Now, I partly agree with this decision in one aspect, which is the RAM, because virtual memory swap and the better RAM management is definitely going to take better advantage of the M1 chips, eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes of RAM, whereas the A12X and the A12Z had either four or six gigabytes of RAM, and that was it. But even then, I don't really feel like RAM is an excuse because the iPads have always been impressive in terms of their performance, even though they've had less RAM than the competition. And on top of that, let's not even mention the fact that macOS Big Sur, which was only one macOS version ago, still had a four gigabyte of RAM minimum requirement. So you could, in theory, run a one-year-old version of macOS on four gigabytes of RAM. Yet Stage Manager, gotta have eight for some reason. 
The other argument I've seen is that it's a graphics limitation, but let's keep in mind the graphics out of the A12Z were improved over the A12X, going from six cores to eight cores. And those eight cores are very similar to what you have in the M1 chip. I still don't think that's an excuse. Maybe storage speed, but even then I don't think that's much of an excuse because the SSDs in the A12X and A12Z systems were very fast. And the only difference with the M1 is that you're bumping up to PCIe Gen 4 NVMe connections. I still don't think that's an excuse because the applications on Mac OS and iPad OS are very different. One is extremely heavy, one is extremely light. I'll let you guess which one's which. So yeah, that's the first weird bad thing about Stage Manager is that it's only on the M1 iPad. So that's the Air and the two current generation Pros and they are completely dropping other completely capable devices like the A12X and the A12Z iPad Pros, which if I hadn't broken my 11 inch iPad Pro, I'd still be using an A12X iPad Pro because I never ran into a situation where it wasn't fast enough. My biggest limitation was the screen size. But yet the 11 inch model of the M1 can also use Stage Manager. And I feel like that is even less screen space, even if you get rid of the side docks. I don't know, that's, that's weird. Now, the second weird bad thing that I don't like about Stage Manager is the way it handles external displays. Now, don't get me wrong, having a full resolution external display connected to an iPad is fantastic. You can set the arrangement. I love the fact that it actually sets the wallpaper to fill the entire screen and you still have access to your dock. I love all of those things, but there are limitations that are put on the window management of the iPad on the iPad screen that they still carry over to a bigger screen. So like the monitor I have here is a Dell 2560 by 1440 HDR monitor. And I wanna be able to put my windows anywhere I want within any pixel. Like I wanna be able to just click and move it to exactly where it is. But iPadOS still wants to snap the windows to some arrangement that isn't quite where I want it to be. And it's kind of irritating because I understand why they would do that on the iPad to sort of snap a window to a spot that in terms of space makes the most sense. But when you have a 27 inch high res monitor that you're working with, especially considering this will support all the way up to the 6K Apple Pro Display XDR, I feel like you shouldn't have to worry about a window snapping to one place or another. You should just kind of let it be put wherever you want it. I mean, like, I know it seems like such a small thing to get fixated on, but when I was trying to do things on my iPad and then fling something over to this screen, I just kind of want it in a place. I don't need it to snap somewhere. And when I'm overlapping windows, I want to be able to put them in a place where I can still see the corner of one so I can get to it. But you want to snap it behind somewhere where it hides everything else. That just gets super frustrating and you spend more time window managing than you do actually working with it. It's kind of irritating and I wish that they would just turn that function off for the secondary display. You can leave it on the main iPad display, but for the secondary display, just if I wanna go two pixels to the left, just let me do it and don't snap the window back to where it was just sitting, please. And that's why I mentioned that I will cover things as they get improved because that could very well be changed. That's just a software limit. Which also brings me on to the third and final weird bad thing that I don't like about Stage Manager, which is that the touch interface for window management it's not great. It really isn't that good. In fact, there are so many things that need to be improved on it that I'm hoping that there are improvements as the beta goes on. Because again, this is beta one, I'm hoping there are improvements. And the biggest one I wanna see is improvements to Stage Manager through touch. Because with the kind of work that I do on my iPad, I find myself taking it off the keyboard case quite frequently and carrying it around. In fact, I do it so often, I recently bought the folio cover just so that I could protect my iPad while I'm carrying it around. And when I'm in stage manager mode, it is such a hassle to hop between the different windows while in a touch interface, which I knew this already. I've used Microsoft Surfaces before and I know that a windowed environment is not very touch friendly, but considering the way that Apple designed the icons to be big enough to touch or use with a cursor, I feel like this is something they definitely need to improve on. Because for right now, whenever I use my iPad Pro, I use Stage Manager exclusively with the keyboard and mouse. So anytime I'm using it on the dock, I use Stage Manager mode and it's fine. I'm using it mainly now just to test it because there are some things that are still kind of irritating, but they're not deal breakers because they're just bugs that need to be improved. 
But whenever I remove it from the dock, I've made a habit of unplugging it from the dock, pulling down the top and turning off stage manager mode and just reverting back to using full screen and split screen apps in touch mode because that has been significantly more optimized for the touch setup that I expect. And I'm not saying that the current stage manager isn't well developed. There are a lot of good ideas that just need to be improved, but it's clear that, well, split screen and those kind of features have been around long enough that they are optimized extremely well. Stage manager is new. There are things that need to be fixed, but those are the big three things that really irritate me. Like I said, I don't really think the M1 chip requirement is ever gonna change, so while that is irritating and kind of a bad thing, once Apple sort of sets their mind on what they're gonna be doing, it doesn't change. So M1 required for the new stage manager feature, that's pretty much set in stone. However, the other two things could potentially be improved because they are both software features. The improved movement and control over windows on a secondary display, as well as better touch optimized window management would be massive improvements for a feature like this because in terms of productivity, I really do see what they're going for and I could see this being extremely useful. However, at the moment, there are some things that just make it a bit of a hindrance. So hopefully those improve in the future. At the end of the day, Stage Manager is definitely the headlining feature of iPad OS 16 and I think for the good things I mentioned, those do outweigh the bad things, even though the bad things are pretty irritating. Some of them though can be fixed with software. Here's hoping. As I mentioned, I do plan on doing an entire video talking about iPad OS 16, as well as iOS 16 and Mac OS Ace Ventura. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that Stage Manager is a worthwhile upgrade? Do you think the limitations are arbitrary like I do? I definitely think that, but I wanna know your thoughts down below. And hey, do you think you might be getting an iPad for Stage Manager or any of the other features? I'm curious to know. Also, a like would be appreciated. Subscribe so you don't miss any of the other content. And aside from that, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching and have a good one.